السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته أنا أم دكتور مجاهد عبد المنطلب صالح Assistant Professor of Surgery Head of Department of Anatomy University of Khartoum We would like to welcome you our students in the second year in the Faculty of Medicine and today inshallah we are going to start talking about a new chapter in the gross anatomy which is the lower limb the dissection of the lower limb. I hope these lectures, the coming lectures, to be joyful for you and to get benefit from it. And uh, of course, as usual, we start by the osteology of the area, the bones. And when we talk about the bones of the lower limb, the first bone that we have, I'm sure they have passed through it in the pelvis, is the hip bone. So I hope it will be just a revision to the hip bone. You know the hip bone is uh, uh, it's a, it's a three bones articulating at one at one point the heel acetabulum. It's the articulation of three bones. The upper one, which is called the ilium, this is the ilium, the upper one, and a an lower anterior one, which is the pupus, this one, the pupus, and here we have the ischium. The three bones they articulate at the acetabulum. Okay. So this is the, the, the ilium, as we said. And the ilium is a, is a flat, wide bone. It broadens. It is the biggest part of the hip bone. And it passes here anteriorly from a, a, a prominent spine, which is anterior superior iliac spine, through the iliac crest. This is the iliac crest. And it go down until it reach the posterior superior iliac spine. So below the anterior superior spine here we have a notch and following this notch we have here the anterior inferior iliac spine. The same thing happened here. We have a slighter notch here below the posterior superior spine which will lead you to posterior inferior iliac spine. So we have four spines, anterior superior iliac spine, anterior inferior iliac spine, posterior superior iliac spine, posterior inferior iliac spine. Usually the spines for example, the anterior superior spine is attached to a ligament or to a muscle or to both. The anterior superior spine here is attached to a sartorius muscle, which we'll come to it later on, and to a ligament called the inguinal ligament, you know it from the abdomen. The anterior inferior iliac spine is attached to rectus femoris, and we will talk about it later on. And it is also attached to a ligament, which is the iliofemoral ligament, the ligament that joins the ilium to the head of the femur. The posterior spines are mainly attached to ligaments and sacroiliac ligaments on the back. The iliac crest, you know the iliac crest, the iliac crest here is attached to many uh, to many muscles. And here the muscles of the abdomen, you know you know some of them uh, a lot of them. And here the quadratus lumborum muscle in the posterior abdominal wall, the uh, internal oblique and the external oblique muscles and uh, also latissimus dorsi has got attachment here. The erector spiny muscle, uh, the face, the lumbar fascia. So we have a lot of muscles and fascia attached to the iliac crest. This might be question in the exam. They may mark to you. We may mark to you the the iliac crest here, and we may ask you about the attached muscles. Now, here we have what we call them the gluteal lines. We have an inferior gluteal line, we have a middle gluteal line, and we have a posterior gluteal lines. Gluteal lines they separate the area of attachment to the gluteal muscles. So we have the anterior gluteal line, middle gluteal line, and posterior gluteal line. Between them is the origin of gluteal muscles, gluteus maximus, gluteus medius, and on the back, gluteus minimus. We'll take them later on when it comes to the muscles of the gluteal area. Type. These are the important notes about the ilium. This is acetabulum. Acetabulum has got an articular area, which articulates with the head of the femur. And this is deepened in the real life. It is deepened more by a cartilage, what we call it the Glandular, glandular acetabuli or, or, or we call it acetabular cartridge it has got many names yani. طيب, uh, the uh, sometimes we call it acetabular labrum the, the most famous name اللي هو acetabular labrum labrum acetabuli or the acetabular cartridge okay this is the ischial spine it is an area of attachment to the ischial spinous ligament this is ischial tuberosity and it has got a rough area with a smooth area and it's also an important attachment area 
to the sacrotuberous ligament. This is for sacrospinous ligament, and this is for the sacrotuberous ligament. The ischial tuberosity also is important for attachment of a lot of muscles. We call them group of muscles. We call them the hamstring muscles. And you know, the hamstring muscles are, uh, we'll know them later on, are the, the muscles of the posterior aspect of the thigh. The, the pubic bone has got a pubic crest, and lateral to it is a pubic tubercle, uh, where the lingual ligament is attached. The pubic bone from it diverges the superior pubic ramus, which joins the ischial ramus, and which joins the acetabulum, sorry, and inferior pubic ramus, which joins the ischial ramus, and all of them they surround an obturator foramen, which is covered by obturator membrane, except for an upper gap here for the obturator nerve and vessels. The pubic bone and the ischial ramus, this area is an important area for attachment of most of the adductor muscles of the thigh. So the extensor muscle or the muscles of the back of the thigh are mainly here, ischial tuberosity, but most of the adductor muscles of the thigh are attached here and we will come to them later on. Type you've got just an important quick revision to the uh, to the to the to the anatomy of the hip bone. Uh, you, you know طبعا, the differences between male and female, you should revise them. طبعا, the, this foramen, obturator foramen is more tri it's triangular in female, it is oval in shape in male. The length of the severe pubic ramus is, is shorter compared to the diameter of the acetabulum in male and the opposite in females. The scale spines are inverted in females and they are inverted in males. So these are important differences between males and females, okay? The femur. The femur is the longest long bone in the human body. It's a long bone. And here we are looking to the anterior aspect of the femur, and here we are looking to the femur from the back. This is the right femur. The femur has got a head. This is the head, where there is a fovea in the central part of the head for attachment of ligament. And this area, this point, represents the main source of blood supply in uh, children. If we look carefully close, this area, the area of the this pit here, is an important source of blood supply, called the fovea capitis, in the center of the head of the femur. This is the head of the femur, and this is the neck of the femur. And this is the greater trochanter of the femur, and this is the lesser trochanter of the femur, and in between them is intertrochanteric line. So this is the head of the femur, this is the neck of the femur, and this is the greater trochanter, and this is the lesser trochanter, and in between them here is the intertrochanteric line. Intertrochanteric crest, sorry. So anteriorly we call it intertrochanteric line, but on the back we call it intertrochanteric crest. This is the shaft of the femur, it's a long bone, it's slightly curved. It broadens down to reach, it broadens down to reach the condyles. This is a medial femoral condyle and this is a supracondylar protuberance. And this is a lateral femoral condyle. We can see that the medial condyle is more protruded compared to the lateral condyle. And this is based here between them is the intercondylar notch. This is the intercondylar notch. So this is a convex shaft, long shaft. It is the longest long bone in the human body. It's a very strong bone. You need a lot of force to fracture the shaft of the femur. But when fracture occur in the shaft of the femur, you should expect a lot of blood loss. Up to two liters of blood can be lost and this can lead to shock, which can be fatal. And an important thing to discuss when we talk about the femur is fractures of the femur. This is the neck of the femur. Very serious thing can happen here, which we call it fracture neck of femur. Fracture neck of femur is very serious because it can affect the blood supply of the head of the femur and it can lead to what we call it avascular necrosis of the head of the femur. It can lead to avascular necrosis of the head of the femur. I think the fracture neck of femur is very important and you commonly ask about it in the exam and I expect you all to go and read fracture neck of the femur. Type, fracture neck of femur is also divided into types intracapsular or extracapsular and into type based on the attachment of the capsule. Not all of the neck of the femur is within the capsule. Maybe anteriorly it's covered by the capsule but posteriorly the neck looks longer. It looks longer posteriorly. That's why half of the neck is inside the capsule and the rest of the neck is outside the capsule of the hip joint, which is the joint between the head of the femur and the acetabulum. So fracture neck of femur can be inside the capsule, intracapsular here or extracapsular here. And of course, 
we'll know later on more why intracapsular fracture is more serious. Intracapsular fracture carries more risk of avascular necrosis compared to the extracapsular fracture. Extracapsular area is more nourished or more rich in blood supply. The risk of avascular necrosis is less. We can have also trochanteric fracture, fracture of the greater or lesser trochanter or is intertrochanteric crest. When you look to the back of the femur here closely, we can see a line or ridge. This is called linear aspera. If you follow this linear aspera upward, you can see that it diverge laterally and medially. Okay, it diverged laterally to reach a, a tuberosity here, which is called the gluteal tuberosity below the greater trochanter. This gluteal tuberosity is important for attachment of gluteus maximus muscle. And it diverged medially here to reach a tubercle here, which is called guadrate tubercle. And this is important for attachment of a muscle called guadratus femoris. We'll come to it later on. The ridge, when it goes down, it diverge also. It diverge to reach the supra medial supracondylar ridge and the lateral supracondylar ridge. So this linear aspera, it diverge upward and it diverge downward. And has got important muscle attached to this area. Better we talk about them later on when we come to the muscles in the thigh. This is articulation of the hip joint. The hip joint is articulation between the head of the femur and the articulation between the head of the femur and the 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 acetabulum. It's an articulation between the head of the femur and the acetabulum here. Okay. Type. Uh, We can see this is a acetabular labrum, a cartilage which is deep in the area. Yani it makes the, the, the socket more deeper. This type of joint is a ball and socket joint. That means it allows all types of movement it can happen here. Yani it can flexion, it can extension, it can abduction, it can adduction, it can medial rotation, it can lateral rotation. All types of movement that can happen in this joint. This is a joint capsule. The joint capsule, as we as you can see, this black line is attached to half of the neck. Not all of the neck is inside the capsule. This is what we're talking about. So if the fracture occurs here, we call it intracapsular fracture. If it occurs here, we call it extracapsular fracture. Three important uh, ligaments, which is stabilize this joint. This is the, the joint itself after covering by ligaments. If the ligament comes from the ilium, downward to the femur we call it iliofemoral ligament if the ligament comes from the pubic bone to the femur we will call it pubofemoral ligament if the ligament comes from the ischium to the pubic bone we call it ischiofemoral ligament so the three bones of the hip joint of the hip bone they can give ligament attachment to the femur iliofemoral pubofemoral and ischiofemoral they resist. They, these ligaments are important to stabilize the joint. Those are, what is the most important ligament? I've taken an iliofemoral. The ligament between the ilium and the femur. Iliofemoral is very important. It, it prevents a hyperextension of the knee joint, of the hip joint. And the pubofemoral, it prevents a hyperabduction because it's coming from the big bone like this, from medial to lateral. So it prevents a hyperabduction on this way. The ischiofemoral prevents a, 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 a medial rotation. Resist or prevent a hypermedial rotation, okay? But these ligaments are important. This is a patient with fracture in the femoral neck, as we said, which is very serious and it can lead to avascular necrosis in the head of the femur. Okay. Now we come to this bone. This is a patella. Patella is a pyramidal shaped bone. It's we come we 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 describe it as an inverted pyramid. Inverted pyramid with the base of this pyramid upward and the apex of the pyramid is down, as you can see. The but th this is the apex and this is the base. This is the articular surface of the patella on the back. We have a lateral surface for the lateral femoral condyle, a medial surface for the medial femoral condyle, and a most medial surface which is non-articular in the sitting in the standing position, our high extension, when you extend the knee joint while you are standing, this meets, most medial surface will be out of contact with the femur. But if you do flexion to your knee, 
this most medial surface will come in contact with the medial femoral condyle. So we have three articular surfaces on the back. They are not two, they are mainly three. Lateral surface, the biggest one. And this is the medial surface. And this is the most medial surface. As we said, in the usual position of standing, while the knee is extended, the lateral surface and the medial surface are attached to the femur. But when you flex your knee, 